Texas. 125, 111. Impressive win on the road for Utah. They are on the right path right now. They take the home and home. They won eight of nine overall. Mitchell becomes uh, the first with 12 straight games of 24 points or more since Carl Malone. Remember him? He was pretty good for the Utah Jazz back in the day. Um, guys, Donovan Mitchell, a little bit of a slow start like his teammates this season. What's gotten him going here in, in the new year? Well, I think a combination of, of, of time and, and, and understanding uh, how to really be the franchise guy. Uh, I think last year in his rookie season, uh, he surprised everyone. I don't, I don't think any of us anticipated the impact that he would have on this roster really becoming the guy that they trusted with the ball in his hands. Uh, and then coming back into this season, the entire NBA is ready for Donovan Mitchell. Correct. So now the game plan is, is geared up to slow him down. Uh, and, and I think it took some time for him and for the team to adjust to how can we be successful with Donovan Mitchell running and leading our team but then balancing it out enough for everybody else to have opportunities. And I think they found a nice sweet spot. Quinn Snyder, to me, is, is one of the great coaches mm -hmm. in our league. I mean, we had a lot of great coaches in the league, but Quinn's doing a great job with his group. Yeah, well said, Fish. I, I think last year, like, like you said, they were a surprise on the season. I think this year Denver might be what, doing what they do, what they were expecting Utah to do. But Mitchell's a stud, man. He's, he's consistent. He's got an outside jump shot. He kind of reminds me like a D-Wade kind of player. Very fast, very athletic, very explosive. Can but make with plays a three-point shot. But with a great three-point shot, yeah. exactly. Can make plays for his teammates. And then you see them starting to figure it out. Gobert's playing with very well. He might make the all-star team. You see them climbing in the ladder. We were talking about this off, off air. Utah's now in seventh spot mm -hmm. and continue to climb before the all-star break. So Utah playing very good basketball, which they usually do. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of credit to Quinn Snyder. Mitchell's averaged 30 a game, 47% from the field, 40 from three-point range over his last 10 games. Uh, how about the Clippers? They returned from a 3-1 and one road trip to find the Kings awaiting them in Los Angeles. We're assisting, guys. We're sharing the basketball. Kids, pay attention. Marching Gortat to Tobias Harris. How about Harris returning the favor? A little pick and roll action. Simple basketball. Easily executed. And then Lou Williams. Become a, an assist machine here over the last couple of games, coming off his first triple double. To Montrez Harrell for the layup and one. Mm. Williams to Harrell again. Great finish right there. Great pass right there by Lou Will. Harrell goes above the rim. Beautiful. Harrell's really found a home in Los Angeles. Clippers with 21 assists on 25 buckets at the half. Second half, here come the Kings. Darren Fox for three. Fox, how about behind the back? Mm. That's nice. Then finishing Bogdan Bogdanovich. Know your Bogdanovi. <laughs> That's a long two. He had 19. Clippers up by five at that point, but they finish it off. Patrick Beverly scooping. Oh. And the night. Long oh. to Harold. 11 of 13 from the field. How about that for efficiency as he goes for 25? and seven rebounds. Clips have now won three in a row and improved to 3-0 and against Sacramento. Kings were just eight of 36 from three. They've lost eight of 10 away from home. Uh, Montrez Harrell was still making his way in the league when he was traded over to the LA Clippers mm -hmm. and had a huge void open up for him when DeAndre Jordan left and, and they haven't really missed a beat in, in that regard. No, nah, he's maximizing, maximizing his opportunity there. You can see plays above the rim, plays with a lot of energy. Uh, very, very similar to Fareed, maybe a little taller in size, but yeah. does a great job averaging 16 points, 7 rebounds. And what I like, averaging 1.3 blocks a game, doing a good job protecting the paint for those guys, giving them great energy, being very efficient, as you saw again tonight. Uh, can finish with both hands inside. So very, very impressive. He's on a short list as well, maybe with Siakam as well in Toronto, is most improved this season. And a great example of a big athletic guy who's going to make a ton of money in the NBA <laughs> by doing really basic things, right? Going to the rim, rebounding, dunking on the pick and roll. It's a good formula if you can pull Great formula. Embrace hey. your role. Yeah, Clippers had 35 assists in this game. Impressive. Uh, for a team that doesn't necessarily have the type of perimeter shooting right. that you sometimes see, you know, with the great shooting teams in the league, it just speaks to, I think, the identity that this team has embraced with one another. No man is greater than the other. They're sharing the basketball, playing together, utilizing the strengths of each of them. Uh, and, and it's impressive. I think Doc Rivers is doing a wonderful job with this group. 
Uh, and they're going to be an interesting team to watch as the season kind of tightens up. You know, can Lou Williams continue that fourth quarter scoring that he does uh, so that the Clippers can steal some wins and, and hang into that, that Western Conference playoff run? Can the Clippers hang on to what is right now the eighth spot for them and hold off the likes of the Lakers, the Timberwolves, the Pelicans, and everybody else? LeBron's coming back. The Western Conference. He's coming back sooner rather than later, that's for sure. All right, much more ahead here on Game Time coming up. Clay on the reasons he's hot at the moment and why the DeMarcus Cousins era is off to such a smooth start. Got a Christmas gift this year, the return to form for one of the Splash Brothers. Clay Thompson's efficiency and percentages have been surging since Christmas Day. He explains why and more in this interview with 3D. Klay Thompson is one of the greatest shooters this game has ever seen. Nobody in the history of the game can heat up like this guy can. Here's Thompson for three. Oh, he is on fire. Thompson again. Klay Thompson is 10 for 10 from three-point range. <laughs> An incredible performance. I want to go back to early in the season. There was so-called some slump you were supposed to be in. Shooters shoot. What's so much different now? I think we're at full strength. I think my game kind of is intertwined with how the team's doing as far as ball movement, flow, pace, all those things. Because when we're playing with great pace and flow, I don't really have to take contested shots. I think my shot quality goes up greatly. And that's what happens when you play with great players. My game just meshes well when we're moving the ball well and we're playing at a high level. Do you guys get enough credit for being so talented and so unselfish? I think people have just gotten used to it. I think the, our style that we have played these last, you know, five, six years have got people accustomed to seeing us hit the back door cutter, you know, make the extra pass, hit the open band. We might not get enough credit for it, but uh, I know people love to watch it. It's more fun to be a part of, and people are just used to it at this point. They just are used to the Warriors, you know, having a 35 assist night with 10 turnovers and, you know, blowing out the competition, but it's harder than it looks. Speak about turnovers. Is that one thing now that pretty much half the season is gone, you guys are starting to tighten up a little bit, just taking better care of the ball? We do this every year. We always start out the year playing a little sloppy, and then Steve always yells at us, brings us back into practice, has us doing passing drills, jump stop, pivot, <laughs> chest pass. Uh, but he always reiterates, you know, the simple leads is spectacular. And he always tells us when we just make that simple play, Four or five possessions from then, you're gonna hit a home run. That's when beautiful plays happen, whether it's an alley oop to KD, a, a Steph 35 foot pull up in transition, you know, Draymond throwing a couple oops, uh, Andre catching them. That's when those happen. The boogeyman, Mr. Demarcus Cousins, is back from an Achilles injury. Here's Durant with it around the screen by Cousins. Big roll, goes there. Welcome back, Demarcus Cousins. Seen him in practice with rehab to get to where he is now, and now he's on the floor. What's so different? When he was in Sacramento, he kind of had to take the team on his shoulders for them to just be above 500. No offense, but I don't think he's played with this much talent unless it was Team USA. Right. So right. the floor is open for him, and he is so unselfish as far as setting screens, making the extra pass. And he's just really smart, too. If I'm coming off him for DHL, he's going to position himself to the defender has to go around him, using his big body, coming off screens, him being able to stretch the floor, knock down threes is such an underrated factor for us. And just being a great basketball player, and he will make the right play. Well, Clay has some of the most red-hot records we've ever seen. Most points in a quarter, most threes in a game, tied for most threes made in a row, 10 in a game, and the 60 points on those 11 dribbles. Real quick, Rip, which one of these impresses you most? Well, the 10 straight threes. I think mm -hmm. for, for, for me as a player, it's, it's hard to make 10 threes, but to make your first 10 threes, <laughs> I think that's very impressive to myself. GA, when you look at uh, Boogie coming in and adding another weapon to this offense and the fact that 86% of their baskets when he's on the floor are assisted, yeah. and then the Wizards were like, okay, we're going to crowd the three-point line and not give them that, and that didn't work. So why did that not work as an approach against the Warriors to crowd the three-point line? Well, I do think that that has to be a part of your game plan to have success against them, and to your point, it didn't work for the – the Wizards, or it didn't work really for the Celtics, but it gave them a chance. And, and, and it's going to be important. The problem, though, is you're talking about 
arguably the highest basketball IQ team that you're going to see collectively. And here, they just take advantage. Oh. You, you overplay, taking away the three. I'll just go in and give me a little quick layup. Again, the ball movement, the spacing, the movement without the ball. And what they do a great job of is every aspect of their offense is the option. And they all make the right reads on these plays. You know, and again, understanding weak side there, you're not going to leave Clay and you're not going to leave Steph. So that just creates an easy opportunity for that pick and roll action with Durant and also Boogie Cousins. So they're just, I think that's the thing that people didn't talk enough about when you look at Cousins coming over and also Durant. Those guys just weren't great players. They were high IQ guys. Like, they also have an ability to play without the basketball. They can make all the plays out on the floor. And Boogie doesn't have to, to Clay's point, he doesn't have to get 25 and 13. If he's getting 17 and 7 for them, you know, that's the equivalent of him getting 25 and 13 on another team because of all the talent that they play with. And he becomes another guy that you have to uh, account for defensively. And when you look at the spacing they create, man, they become almost unguardable at times when they're clicking. Rip, when you look at the Warriors and their adjustments offensively, mm -hmm. that's easy to see. But defensively against Boston, they also made some adjustments in that game. Oh, yeah. People forget how great of a defensive team this team is. I mean, when you look at the numbers, they slipped a lot, a little bit from the previous two years. But this is a team that really kind of gets at it. And it starts with Klay Thompson and his ball pressure. I think he's one of the best two-way players that we got in the game. And him guarding Kyrie Irving right here. But look at the weak side. You got two guys in the paint. You got Steph Curry and Draymond Green helping and is willing to give up uh, the shot for Al Horford. Again, you see three guys, all of them, they got their eyes on Kyrie Irving because they know that he's a big part of this team. Now you got a guy like Boogie Cousins that can pretty much be a rim protector for this team, which they've been lacking all season long. Again, put Kyrie in pick and roll. The big stays out. Looney stays there until Livingston can get back. Boogie now has to guard too. Now he does a great job of getting in front of Al Horford. And now when they do that, now they're in transition, and this is where they make teams pay. If this team's allowed to get in transition and get easy baskets, especially like that, they're just too good of a team. They're, they, they share the ball. They average, you know, close to 30 assists a game. This is a team that's tough to beat, beat not just because their offensive game, but their defense, their defense has also been great, too. Certainly a dynamic ball club. We all know about the Splash Brothers, but now they have the Splash Cousins. I mean, <laughs> he's shooting 57% from three-point range since coming over. But how has he unlocked this offense in different ways? Well, the big thing for him is the shot quality, okay? When, when you're the focal point of the offense, oftentimes you're going to take a lot of 9-1-1s. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to create all your own offense. And you see here, offense gets created for him. I mean, these are not hard shots. And so when you give a great player these kind of looks, he's going to shoot a tremendously high percentage. And I think for, from his standpoint, it's probably the easiest the game has ever been other than when he plays on Team USA mm -hmm. because he's basically playing on Team USA yeah. right now when you look at the makeup of this Warrior squad. And Rip, to your point, the point <coughs> differential since Boogie has been with the Warriors, that's the thing that you're looking at, including – their tight game against Boston, that's factored into the equation. Listen, you got five all-NBA guys on a team, and when they're on the floor together, you look, they got 43 assists on their 50 makes. So that's very impressive to me because anytime you got a superstar-type caliber guy, you got two former MVPs, a lot of times guys try to take it upon themselves to kind of be the leader on the offensive end. But they know they do it by committee. You heard uh, Clay Thompson's interview. He says, hey, you know what? I got the luxury of playing with great players. And when you're playing with great players, the spacing is great, like GA say. You ain't got to take tough shots. You ain't got to go out there and force the issue because you know if you swing the ball, your teammate is going to be looking for you to get yourself a wide-open basket. Well, it won't be too long before you can see the Splash Brothers and the Splash Cousins right here on NBA TV. They're on game night Monday. Casey Stern, Candace Parker, Steve Smith will call the game between the Warriors and the Pacers. The nightcap will feature the Hawks and the Clippers. Coverage starts at 6.30 with the Auto Trader pregame show. Kyle Kuzma, JaVale McGee both out tonight for the Lakers as they face the Phoenix Suns. Of course, LeBron James has missed the last 15 games, and Rajon Rondo has missed 34 games this season. Here's Luke Walton ahead of tonight's matchup. Kuzma and, and, and LeBron, they, 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 they'll play when they can. You know, they're not... Uh... They're not out with things. I mean, Kuz tried to play through this last game, and we saw he just couldn't do, get the job done. So instead of having him limp around out there, let's get him healthy enough to where he can help our team win. And uh, 
we have other guys that are going to get opp more opportunities now. And they, need, they need to step up, and, uh, you know, we, we believe that they will. But it's, you know, there's, there's certain things you can play through and there's certain things you can't. And if you try to play through things that you shouldn't be, uh, you're more likely to get hurt and, and more likely the team doesn't get a win anyway. With that, let's welcome in Tanya Ganguly of the Los Angeles Times. Tanya, great to have you. Look, LeBron won't play tonight, but he went through contact drills on Saturday. Is there an expectation on when he'll return? Not yet. We're still kind of waiting to see how he does through those contact drills. Saturday was the first time Luke Walton actually saw him doing contact drills. It was the first time he did it with the Lakers. So um, I think at this point, it's just a matter of with groin injuries, you have to be careful. You have to see how it reacts to every step of the way. And the Lakers are going through that process right now. So no Lonzo Ball. Also Kyle Kuzma out tonight. No JaVale McGee. But to Kuzma, how serious is this hip injury that has him out tonight? Kyle Kuzma has been dealing with this for a little over a week now, and he's a guy that, you know, Kobe Bryant is his idol. He's a guy that wants to play through everything. So he was playing through it, and I think in their last game, they just reached a point where everyone could see that it was affecting him too much. Luke Walton told him during the weekend that if you're moving like you did on Thursday, I don't want you out there. So they came to that decision that it's only going to hurt him to be out there. Um, I think it's serious in terms of that because the Lakers have been missing so many guys and this injury situation just keeps snowballing for them. But Kuzma should be better as he gets a few days off. Yeah, the Lakers 5-10 and 10 without LeBron. Is there a sense of disappointment in the way that this young core has performed in LeBron's absence? I think that there's understanding because it's not just been LeBron they've been missing Rajon Rondo then they lost Lonzo Ball right when Rondo was coming back so the injury situation has just been really tough for everyone to go through I think Luke Walton I asked him today how do you address this so that you don't your young players don't give into the frustration you can feel and he said that you address it you talk about it you make sure they're aware that this is something that can happen and hopefully they can get themselves past that but it's just been so tough I mean not just LeBron, which is a huge, huge injury to have, but they've had so many other pieces missing. And today with Kyle Kuzma missing, that's going to be a significant dent to their firepower. Certainly, it'd be interesting to see how the Lakers play tonight, and everyone's awaiting LeBron James' return. Tanya Ganguly from the LA Times, appreciate your time. Thank you. No problem.